Welcome to the home of 100 to 1 Faith TV, the place where stories of amazing faith overcome impossible odds. I'm Larry Gent, and this is the message for Grace Hartwood United Methodist Church on January 16th, 2022, Nudging the Hand of God. Please join us in this opening prayer. God of every land and nation, you have created all people and you dwell among us in Jesus Christ. Listen to the cries of those who pray to you as we proclaim the greatness of your name so all people will know the power of love at work in the world. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 9. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God! People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. The New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 11. There are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in all kinds of different tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Our Gospel story is from John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and His disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of his signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. 
There are a lot of interesting characters in this story. Curiously, the usual cast of characters at a wedding don't show up here. The bride gets no mention. The groom makes a cameo appearance, but doesn't say a word. Their parents do not even rate a passing glance. The rabbi isn't important. Nobody seems to even care about the worship service. As a pastor, this kind of makes me crazy. I've spent decades telling folks that this is a holy moment, a moment worth celebrating to be sure, but a spiritual event, much more than an excuse to throw a big party. The Gospel of John did not get my memos on this topic. The whole story is about the party. We've got the worried wine steward and a bunch of party-hardy apostles. Do you suppose it's a coincidence that the wine ran out after they showed up? We've got the caterers running around as caterers do. It's a scene of well-choreographed chaos. And there's a savior who shows up and clearly gets right miffed when someone suggests he should get involved. But sometimes I think the main character here is the least expected one. It's Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, Mary, the handmaiden of the Lord, Mary full of grace, that Mary. Why do you suppose she was there? Weddings are generally family events. Maybe these folks were cousins of hers, maybe in-laws of some kind. We'll never know for sure. Here's the one thing we can know for certain. When these people had a problem, Mary cared about it. This might not look like a major problem to others. Apparently, even Jesus himself didn't think it was a serious issue. You can fairly imagine Mary bustling over to him, commanding Jesus' attention in a way that only moms can manage. Jesus! Jesus, they are out of wine. Jesus, don't look away when I'm talking to you. Do you hear me, Jesus? They are out of wine. And Jesus replied, as sons always reply, even if they happen to also be the Savior of the world. Oh, my. I'm trying to work out salvation for the entire world here. I don't have time to be a born-again bootlegger. And Mary played a card that I think only mothers carry. She simply ignored his objections. Only moms can overcome obstacles by ignoring them. She saw a problem. She talked to Jesus about it. End of problem. And not even Jesus could change her mind. What gave her that kind of faith? What, what gave her that kind of boldness? Maybe it was just that her son was the Messiah, but I think there was more to it than that. I think there was a little thing called empathy. Empathy means far more than feeling pity for someone else. Empathy is the ability to walk in somebody else's shoes, to see the world through their eyes. It literally means to be able to get inside someone's skin. And that is the very word Jesus used, the word we translate as peacemakers. Jesus said, blessed are those who can get inside another skin, those who show that kind of empathy because those people see God. Jesus spoke those words at the Sermon on the Mount. But do you suppose it's possible that as he spoke, he was thinking of his mother Mary, 
feeling that kind of empathy, getting inside the skin of someone she loved at the wedding of Cana. Could that be the reason that millions of Christians over thousands of years have asked Mother Mary to intercede for them? Because Mary taught all of us how to feel the deepest needs of others. And here's the thing. When you feel that kind of passion, something amazing happens. Understanding a need and telling Jesus about it still does exactly what it did in Cana of Galilee. It nudges the very hand of God. It makes miracles possible. Even when the whole world says, Psh, nobody cares about that little need. Not even God in his heaven cares about something so small. The voice of faith says, I can see it, I can feel it, and I can trust Jesus with it. And that settles it. So get out of the way and watch this, because miracles are on the way. But look carefully at the story. Mary didn't stop with feeling the need and talking to Jesus about it. She got others involved. She said, the miracle is on the way, so just do whatever Jesus tells you. You know, that's still pretty good advice. Mary was a superstar of faith and empathy, but maybe that's because she knew Jesus so well. Do you suppose it's possible we could see miracles just like that? Could it be so simple? Let's see. Take somebody who knows Jesus well. Okay, check. We've got that. Now, let them feel such passion that they cannot be silent about a hurt, a heartache, a need, or a dream. Let them walk in the shoes of others. Let them see through those eyes. Okay, that might take a little bit of practice, but you know, we can do that too. Now comes the next step. Believe that your passion and Christ's compassion fit together perfectly. And that can work miracles. That can nudge the very hand of God. Faith like that cannot take no for an answer. Not even when it seems God is silent. Faith like that knows God's hand is going to move. Oh, and just one more thing. Tell others that you've talked to Jesus and it's all going to work out fine as long as we all do whatever Jesus says. See it, feel it, tell Jesus about it, and tell others it's going to happen. That sounds like a good recipe for a miracle to me. That sounds like more than enough to nudge the very hand of God.